Hi there, folks, and welcome to another Workspace Wednesday right here on Lean Strategies International LLC, where you can find solutions that ignite your power. Now, this week, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to be reviewing a function that we wrote uh, about a month or two ago. And because we've had so many questions on it, I think it's just easier to create a video to answer your questions. Um, and that video was how to timestamp uh, a cell and document the date and time uh, when you use a checkbox to show that it's complete. So right here you'll see we have a checkbox. If we uncheck it, uh, D2 is blank. If we check it, it's going to generate a timestamp. Now these ones below it, we haven't updated or anything. Uh, we've just left them the way they are or the way they were. And as you can see, they haven't changed. And that's what most of the questions were is that um, does this stay static when you use a, the now function? How come mine keeps updating? So the first thing you got to say is that it will not update. It will stay static when you open the page or reload. But the function, as shown here in the video, um, has to be written the same way. And we'll leave a link to that original video in the description down below so you can watch it and make sure that your function is written exactly the same way. We also wanted to take a little bit of time to go over the syntax on this function that we wrote so that you can understand how it works. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. Now, first, if you can see right here, we've got 5-7-2024 at 10.54 a.m. And that was obviously one we just unchecked and then rechecked. And then we have 7-18-2023, 1-10-2024. So let's make sure that this stays static. And to do that, we're going to go up to the view bar. We're going to hit reload. And you'll see that it reloads the page. I'm going to blow this back up so that you can see it a little closer. And you can see that there is no change in the previous time. Everything stayed static. So why does that happen? Well, let's look at our syntax a little bit closer here. So we start with the ifs formula. And if C2 is false is our first condition. So remember, this is all being driven by the checkbox. So our checkbox is right here, and when it's checked, that means true. When it's unchecked, it means false. So if C2 is false is our first condition, you can see it's false here, then we want to leave it blank. That's our first value. So as you can see here, C2 is false, so D2 is being left blank. Now let's go on to our next condition or condition two. And that is if D2 equals blank, okay, then our value is going to be um, the now function. So D2 is blank. And so what does that mean? When the now function runs, it's leaving it blank because it's blank. This is why we have to turn on circular dependency because it's just staying blank, okay? And if it's, here's our next condition. If it's true, then we want to place in this cell what is in D2. So let's see what happens when we change this to true. We get 5-7-2024 at 10.57.50 a.m., right? Now, the reason this doesn't change is because if it's true, we want to put what's in D2, but remember, this, this function right here is a circular dependency, so it continues to repeat this time over and over again, and that's how it won't stay static. So you have to make sure that that circular dependency is turned on. And you can see that in the first video. And 
Um, so make sure you check the links in the description below and that'll show you how to uh, turn on the circular dependency and write this function. But essentially, when we reload it, you'll see that nothing will change in this because of that circular dependency that's turned on. So you have to make sure that that is on. So let's go ahead and figure out how we turn on that circular dependency so you can make sure yours is on. So we hit on the file, click settings. You'll see your general information right here. Um, you go to calculation. You're gonna wanna make sure that your recalculation is on because this will affect how the now function that's used in this is updated. And then you also wanna make sure that your iterative calculation is also turned on. And this allows that circular uh, dependency to continue to um, calculate so that the, the number stays static. Uh, the next one down is the number of iterations. So we could change that to whatever we want. Um, threshold 0 0.05, we'd just leave that alone. And then you make sure and save your settings. And as you can see right here, our, our dates that are completed based on these checkboxes have not changed. So if we reload this again, if we didn't have that circular dependency or that iterative calculation turned on, then this would change every time we reloaded it. And since we have it on, you can see that everything is driven off of this check mark, whether it's true or false and it just continues to recalculate and so this will never change okay so check your function make sure it's written identically to what's in the video and as always if you have any questions feel free to comment down below and we'll do our best to get back to you have a great week everyone we'll see you right back here on lean strategies international llc Well, hi there folks and welcome to another Workspace Wednesday. This week we have a fun little function that we're going to write inside of Google Sheets and it comes from a question on our YouTube channel. So before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button and like the video if you enjoy it and it can be helpful for you. And feel free to submit your comments or your questions down below where every Wednesday we'll be posting a Google Workspace tip. So let's get started. Uh, this week's question was, how can I click on a checkbox to complete a task and automatically generate a date or a timestamp is what they're looking for. So what I'm thinking is they're probably like a lot of other people and they're just manually putting it in each time and that gets kind of tedious after a while. You can see how long it takes. So we're gonna go ahead and write a formula that will timestamp this uh, right here in this column when we click on our checkbox. Now remember checkboxes when they're not clicked are the same as being false and when they are clicked are the same as being true. So with that in mind we're going to use really just two different functions. That's going to be the ifs function and the now function but we have to do a few little tricky things here to actually make this work. So let's get started. We're going to open our function up with the equal sign. And we're going to go ahead and type in ifs. Now we're not going to use if, so we want to make sure we have ifs because we're going to have a couple of things chained together here. We're going to open up our bracket. And the first cell that we're going to be grabbing is where our checkboxes are in C2. So we're going to go ahead and put in C2. You'll see it'll highlight it right there. And then we're going to hit our equal sign again, and we're going to type in false. Now you can see that right now that checkbox is false. So that's going to be the driver of this entire function. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit a comma. Now we're going to do something kind of tricky. We're going to put two quotes in. So if C2 is false, we uh, need that to show up blank. 
and we'll see how this drives in just a second. Then we're going to put another comma in. Now here's where it gets tricky. We don't want to go back to C2. We want to go from D2, which is the cell that we're in, and then we're going to hit equal sign, two more quotes, and then we're going to put in our now formula, and we're just going to close that because what we're going to do later is we're going to turn on our uh, circular dependency or iterative calculations and that will allow each of these to calculate their own date and time without updating every time. If you don't do that, every time you hit that checkbox, it's going to update your time and you'll get really annoyed trying to fix that. So we'll put in another comma. Now this is going to give us our instructions for when this checkbox is true. And when it's true, we want to grab what's in D2. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see here, uh, we can drag this down. Now let's go ahead and check this first one. And you can see we're going to get a reference. Now we don't want that. We want a timestamp for the time that it was complete. So to fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our file. We're going to go to our settings. We're going to click on calculation and we're going to change our iterative calculation to on. You can choose how many iterations you want. I'm just going to leave it at 50 right now. And then we're going to save our settings. And then what we're going to do is drag this down and you can see that it'll update automatically. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to calculate the time that it's completed. So as soon as we hit this checkbox, we want a date and we want a time that it's completed. So we're gonna select the whole column. We're gonna to go to format. We're gonna go down to our numbers and we're gonna select date and time. Now let's test it out. And there it is right there. We'll click the other one, click the other one, Another one, and you can see it generates all our different times. Now, one more thing we're gonna do in case you want this piece of data, maybe you wanna know how many days this task sat in queue. So that's really easy to do now that we have our function set up for the timestamp. We're just gonna hit an equal sign. We're gonna select our date completed, and we're gonna subtract our date added. And you'll see that'll give us our days in queue. So if we were to change one of these, for example, then you'll see that our days in queue will automatically be calculated. So maybe you're adding your list here and you've got clean office and you finally get to it, you check it off, now it automatically calculates. So that's it. That's how you can drive a timestamp using checkboxes uh, with a cool little function. And remember, if you couldn't keep up with the function in the video, it's always down in the description. So thanks for watching everyone. We'll catch you next time right here on Lean Strategies International LLC. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next week for Workspace Wednesday.